we're going to go to war. We're going to drive them to the sea. We're going to basically, as the Arab leaders were saying at the time, we will paint the road from Jerusalem to Damascus with the skulls of Jews. So they went and they waged the war. They waged the war. So f at that time, five surrounding Arab armies. We're talking about five countries. We're talking about uh, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, and Iraq all invaded Israel. The Being the most dangerous commentary show on Beyonce's internet comes with its own set of challenges. YouTube time and time again refuses to promote our videos because we have very controversial takes on extremely sensitive subjects. So chances are if you stumbled on this clip by accident, you'll never get to see our content again unless you hit that subscribe button. It only takes one second. But either way, we're glad you're here. And now, back to the clip. I do want to establish something. I think, and to all your viewers watching, I think any reasonable person, just because we went through all this history, mm -hmm. uh, I think any reasonable person would be like, you know what? I think it's fair that the Jews, you know, if they can't live with the Arabs, let them have their own autonomy, their own independence, let them live in peace, and let the Arabs also have their own. So you believe land. in kind of like a two-state solution I, type look, of? I'm a hawk. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a hawk. I'm a dove. Okay. I want mm -hmm. peace. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I, I, if, if two-state solution is going to be something peaceful, I'm not an extreme Zionist. I'm not somebody that wants like, oh, the whole. I'm not like a biblical zealot yeah. that's like, oh no, this is given to us and. But well, see, so. that's the thing too, right? Even if we're talking about the possibility of a two-state solution, when even in the conversation, Israel continues to annex parts of the West Bank, yes. even through the conversation, yes. they're like. You know, because and it's also like tell me if I'm wrong, but it's something I noticed where like, whenever there is um uh whenever there is um like negotiations about to happen, so let's say for example they would say like okay do we want Israel to go back to the 1948 line, and then right before these negotiations happen there will be like what Israel likes to refer to as um uh what what was the term uh mowing the lawn right they will mow the lawn where they're going to in the, either the West Bank or Gaza. You know what I mean? A strife happens. They move the line. And then what would happen is in the negotiation, they will go back to whatever the initial lines were at to show that there is some sort of concessions happening. This is something that you tend to see quite a bit. Now, here's my question for you, right? When we're talking about even the possibility of a two-state solution, because a one-state solution doesn't seem like it's going to happen, especially if we're asking people to renounce whatever their ethnicity or, or background, whatever it is, right? So... If we start talking about a two-state solution, but even in the conversation, there is this continual, uh, this continual influx of settlers into the West Bank, inflaming the situation over and over again. One would think that if you like, you you give you shaking my hand with one hand, but then you know what I mean, playing behind my back in the in the in the other, right? Yeah. Because if you're telling me that hey, we want to be able to work out a two-state solution, but your settlers are still, even, right. even some that, like, even the, the, the settlements that are considered to be illegal in the West Bank, that the government of Israel considers illegal, those still, those illegal settlements still have protection from the Israeli government. So you can't tell me that you think that something is illegal and then protect it at the same time and tell me that you're negotiating in good faith. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so how, how, how do you, how do you get around that? How do we even I, talk I about, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, mm. I think it's really important to know how the annexations happen, how the quote mm. unquote occupied disputed areas, mm. how did we get there? So let's go back to 1947. The UN said, okay, uh, the British left, by the way, because mm. they were like, hey, we don't want to deal with this problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They just handed it to the UN and well, they, they, know, they started they, the problem. I know. I they know. Started it. I know. <laughs> They're like, oh, God no, damn. So we're out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what mm. did they do? They gave the, the mandate to Palestine to the UN, right? Mm -hmm. So it's for the UN to figure out. And so the UN said, okay, we're going to draft up. Uh, mind you, the the um, the mandate of Palestine, at that time, you had what you would see now, Israel, West Bank, Gaza. You also had Transjordan. Mm -hmm. so the plan was to give all of Transjordan mm -hmm. to the Arabs, as well as a good chunk of the West Bank, which we call Judea and Samaria, mm -hmm. and give them a good part of the Gaza, and the Jews were going to get a little slip. Right on the on the west coast and and also the southern land, but that was all barren desert. It wasn't even the good part of the land. It wasn't the fertile part of the land. Uh, the Arabs actually got the better deal out of it. 1947, the Jews we accepted it. The Arabs said no, we reject it. We will not have any Jewish state here um, at all, even if it's the size of a postage stamp. They says, you know what? The Arab League, they said that we don't need the UN. We don't need the international community. We're going to go to war. We're going to drive them to the sea. We're going to basically. As the Arab leaders were saying at the time, we will paint the road from Jerusalem to Damascus with the skulls of Jews. Mm. That was the battle cry at the time. So they went and they waged the war. They waged the war. So f at that time, five surrounding Arab armies. We're talking about five countries. We're talking about uh, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, 
Egypt, in Iraq, all invaded Israel, the newfound state. And though the war lasted for about a year, and they and 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 they lost, they ended up mm -hmm. losing the war. Yes. Now, did the did the did the lines start to change? Mm -hmm. Sure. But there was never a peace agreement. Right. There was always a it was just a ceasefire, and it was just kind of like ceasefire tension, but just kind of coexist. So they started that they started that war expecting to win that war, because you know when we're talking about a war of wiping out a, a, a total amount of people and a total amount of land, it's it's genocidal in nature, especially when that was always been the battle cry. You know the the the, the thing that most people don't want to talk about when it comes to this conflict is the undercurrent of like a very common theme about what's been always happening is that one side has been willing to have peace. The other side has always been th thirsty for blood. The other side does not want to live with the other side. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning, I'm talking before annexations. I'm talking about before the settlements and things of that sort. Now, mm -hmm. I do want to direct your your, your answer, uh, or your, give you an answer on the question that you asked me about the, the settlements and everything like that. The settlements came about after 1967. In 1967, you had the Six-Day War. Once again, they went and mounted another offensive uh, against Israel and lost that war. This time we annexed the Sinai Peninsula, we mm -hmm. got the Golan Heights, the mm -hmm. West Bank, we got Gaza. And of course, when you win a defensive war and there's still no peace agreement, you have to move the line. You have to move the front line just in case there's going to be another attack. So by a UN standard, it was a legal occupation from a strategic standpoint. Now, here's the thing. Here's a really another hot take. Palestine never even declared stateship. So what does that mean? Palestine was never sovereign. It was a disputed area. So even the West Bank, Gaza right now, it's still a stateless state because they the reason why they haven't declared it is because for them to declare statehood would have to in turn recognize that the state of Israel exists as well. And they do not want to do that because they want it all from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Mm -hmm. That has been the battle cry.